You're watching the Free Pilot Training Channel, where today we're going to dive into a lesson on Class Bravo Airspace. We're going to talk about what you need to know as far as characteristics, rules, VFR weather minimums, and equipment required to operate in this airspace. Let me preface this lesson by saying Class Bravo is not the best place to learn how to fly, but you are required to know the rules since as a private pilot you can legally fly here. Now that that's done, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of Bravo Airspace. The first thing that you'll notice is that this airspace is surrounded by big blue markings on the VFR sectional. Now, as I mentioned in the last lesson, you can remember Class B airspace by thinking B is for busy, but you could also remember B is for blue to mark that airspace. Let's take a closer look at the Bravo airspace surrounding Memphis. You'll notice that it's divided up into segments, and if you take a look at it from the side, it would resemble an upside down wedding cake. If you look inside each section, you'll notice that each is marked by some numbers that look like they're improper fractions. These aren't fractions though. This is the altitude for the top and the bottom of that Bravo airspace in this section, expressed in hundreds. So the Bravo airspace in this section this girl's pointing to starts at 5000 MSL and goes up to 10000 MSL. This section starts at 3000 MSL and goes up to 10000. Now you'll notice that this middle section goes all the way down to the surface. But you can see how I could actually fly beneath this airspace as long as I stay below this lower altitude. Okay, time for a pop quiz. Let's say I'm in this northern section at 2,500 feet MSL. Am I in the class Bravo airspace? The answer is no, I'm 500 feet beneath the shelf since this section starts at 3,000 feet. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the rules in class B airspace. First of all, you have to have your private pilot certificate. However, a student pilot may fly solo in Bravo with the proper endorsements and as long as they follow all the other rules. The biggest rule is that you must be cleared by ATC to go in there. You don't have to be cleared to go under the shelf, but you definitely have to be cleared before you can go into the Bravo airspace. Let's take just a second to look at some proper radio communications going into this airspace. If you haven't made too many radio calls, a good format is who they are, who you are, where you are, and what you want. Today, I'm flying Skyhawk 12345 at 6,500 MSL, and I'm 40 nautical miles to the northwest. I want to fly into West Memphis, which is a small airport under the Class B shelf. Now, legally, you don't have to talk to anybody as long as you stay out of the Class B airspace by staying below these altitudes. So we either need to start descending to get below that airspace, or we need to contact Memphis Approach. Let's give them a quick call. Memphis Approach, Skyhawk 12345, 40 miles to the northwest, 6,500, inbound for West Memphis with the numbers. Now they're trying to find you on radar. First, they're going to assign you a squawk code. Then, if you forgot any part of that previous radio call or they didn't hear it, they're going to ask you for that information. Then they'll start giving you instructions and other important information. Let's assume I have a beautiful radio voice and they heard every word. Skyhawk 12345, Memphis Approach. Descend and maintain 5000, squawk 0123, altimeter 2992. I'll answer this radio call in just a second so you can hear the correct response. But first, can I fly into the Class Bravo airspace now? No, you can't. You must hear the phrase cleared into the Class Bravo airspace. Now let's respond to Memphis Approach. We have to say our call sign, then make sure you read back all the information they just gave you. They want to make sure you heard all the numbers correctly. Descend and maintain 5000, squawk 0123, altimeter 2992, Skyhawk 12345. Then once they find you on radar, you might hear something like this. Skyhawk 12345, Memphis Approach, radar contact, cleared into Class Bravo, report the field in sight. Now we can go into Class B airspace. To finish up this radio call, I'll just repeat exactly what they said. Cleared into Class Bravo, we will report the field, Skyhawk 12345. Before we continue, comment below if you found that valuable and you'd like to see more training on radio communications. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already so you can be alerted every time there's a new lesson. Next, let's look at the weather minimums for the Class Bravo airspace. That means this is the worst the weather can be and you can still fly VFR. For Class B airspace, this is three statute miles visibility and clear the clouds. Visibility simply means how far you can see. 
and this can be impaired by smoke, haze, fog, rain, all kinds of different stuff. So we need to be able to see at least three miles to fly legally in Class B airspace. Clear of clouds simply means that you can fly right up to a cloud as long as you don't touch it. That's because there could be planes on an IFR clearance flying through those clouds, and that wouldn't be very much fun running into one of those guys. Next, let's take a look at the equipment required before we can go into Bravo airspace. First is a working two-way radio, and that makes sense because we have to be cleared in order to go into that airspace. We also need to have a working transponder with altitude reporting. In fact, it doesn't matter what altitude you're flying at. If you fly inside of this magenta ring, which is called the Mode C Veil, you must have a transponder with altitude reporting. The Mode C Veil is a 30 nautical mile ring around an airfield with Class B airspace. Our last equipment requirement is ADSB. This stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, and it's kind of a newer requirement from the FAA. This equipment's designed to help air traffic control find your airplane easier. Anytime you're in the Mode C Veil, you have to have working ADSB, and it doesn't matter which altitude you're at for this one either. And you still need it if you fly over 10,000 feet. Hey, I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to smash like for me and share this video with a friend. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Aircraft calling, safe position.